Hey guys, welcome to a new video in this algorithm and data structure tutorial. In this video, we're going to talk about uh, time complexity analysis and we're going to look at different kind of examples of like uh, time complexity and also a bit about space complexity. So the thing, first thing we're going to talk about here is like performance analysis, like the basic of performance and analysis in algorithms and data structures. So like when we are like analyzing our performance of our like uh, data structures and our algorithms, like we, we try to like measure it, like how, how does the performance change when the number of input elements change. So let's say we have a, a list or an array that we get in and then the number of elements that that, 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 that like container or list contains, like how does the performance change um, um, compared to like the number of elements. So we have like some kind of like correlation between the input size and the number of operations or like the number of, of, of space we have um, for our algorithm and like how much uh, space it takes up and also like how many operations it takes compared to like the number of input elements in our, our in our array. So we have, first of all here, we have like this performance analysis, which contains like two sub uh, analysis where we look at space complexity and like time complexity. And what the mer one of the most important uh, aspects that like in modern uh, um, programming is the time complexity. Like we don't really like care that much about like space complexity anymore because we have so much uh, memory and stuff like that in, in, in like modern computers. So, but it, it's still like kind of important, but we don't like care that much about it uh, anymore compared to like, for example, um, time complexity. So we're going to focus a lot more about uh, time complexity and like what time complexity, like what can, what can like improve our time complexity and like what can cause a, a worse time complexity and stuff like that. So inside of time complexity, you have like this best case scenario and an average case scenario and worst case scenario for like the operations um, on our data structures and also the algorithms that we write. And then we have like space complexity where we can have like a fixed size of space complexity and also like a variable size of space compared to like the number of, of input elements in, in an array. So when we're talking about like space complexity, let, well, let's take an example here where we're searching a number in a list, like we've, we search through the whole list in linear time and then we're searching for a specific number. Then we talk about like these three cases here inside of like time complexity where we have the worst case scenario, the best case scenario and average case scenario. And for this example here where we just search through the whole list and try to find a number, like the worst case scenario for this example is that we find the number at the end of the list. So like the last element in our list is where the number is that, that we're searching for. So the time complexity in the worst case for this example here will be linear time because we have to search through the whole list and and it will also like be linear if we increase the number of elements in our list because it will just stay at the end all the time. So this is the worst case and we also like often used or the worst case so it's often like examined the worst case when we're talking about like time complexity for our our algorithms and also our data structures like operations on our data structure because like uh, most of the time like we just have to like um, think that we have the worst case and we can really like depend on, on the other uh, cases maybe a bit about the average case which, which we're going to talk about but we also have this best case scenario here where we just find the number on the first check in the list so it will be constant time regarding of like um, the number of elements in our in our array. So we ne almost not, like never use the best case scenario because it's just so unreliable and also unrealistic. Like it's unrealistic that we just like find the, the first number every time we, we search for a list. So we want to find an, ar an arbitrary like number in, in an arbitrary list. Um, and that list can be like different all the time. And then it's like really unre unrealistic that we just find the, the first number like every time, like we just find the, the number on the first check like every time um, we use this algorithm uh, or like data structure. So we almost never use this because it's just unreliable and unrealistic. And it's just like, if we hit the best case, it will like most of the time just be pure luck. So we'll have the last case here, which is the average case. And if the average case is just like, it is the average like time complexity of like a number of, uh, like a number of tests. So we find uh, the average case for this example here is that if it finds the number like halfway through the list, so we will be like in the middle and sometimes like the average case is also used to like measure the time complexity where like most often the time is, is the worst case that we're talking about because like the average case is like hard to find or like calculate compared to the worst case because we don't really like know what the average case is and it, it also like depends on the algorithm and it just changes a lot the average case and it, it is yeah, like we have to do a lot of different kind of tests on 
on the average case for our algorithm instead of just calculating like, or like finding the worst case and then just sticking with that. So when we're talking about time complexity, we're using this big O notation as we talked about in the, in the first video as well. So just to like recap this before we go into some example of like some of the time complexities in code. And later on, I'm also going to show you like actual code where we're implementing an algorithms and then like sorting algorithms. And then we're actually like trying to to test our time complexity for the algorithm that we have um, that we have like um, implemented. So remember to like go through the whole, the whole video here to get like the, the theory behind it and also see an example of like how we can do it in a practical uh, test. So the big so so here we have like a list of the of the time complexities that we can that we can have. Like for example, we can have like O log of n, which is like having having the problem every time. Um, every time and we can also like have, if we have one for loop um, which is the example that we just had where it is linear time so the, like the number of in like the number of operations is like um, linear to like or proportional to the number of of elements in our array we can also have like two 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 for loops in sequence which will also be a uh, linear time it will actually like be two times n but we don't, don't really care about um, the constants when we're talking about time complexity so it will also just be linear time if we have two for loops in a sequence but if we're like having for example like two nested for loops so a for loop inside of a for loop we will have quadratic time here which is a really um, really bad um, time complexity so over here to the right we can see like the different kind of uh, the different types of uh, time complexities and how good they're performing so let's say here we have like elements down here on the x-axis on operations up on the y-axis here. So we can see like some of the best algorithms they have like O log, o log n and and uh, and constant time um, time complexity. So like these are not really like um, really like often we we use some of those algorithms in like practical ex examples, and we will often use like some maybe linear and in in most of the times we will use n log n. So we can see that. Um, that this n log n is, is like a fair or like kind of a bad uh, time operations, but it's still like a lot better compared to if you have like for example quadratic time complexity or like uh, to to the power of, of n, which is like, array, like n in this case here is the number of elements in um, in our array, so like the, the number of inputs um, to our um, to our um, algorithm. So we can see down here that that we just get like a really steep curve here if we get like uh, quadratic time complexity compared to some of the other complexities here um, which we have like for example in quicksort and some of the like sorting algorithms so if we have like a really large um, vector or like a really large array that we want to do some operations on or like sort the sort the array then we need to like think about like the, the algorithm that we're using so we don't like just use um, unnecessary operations and just make a program like just worse like um, time wise so here's some examples of like how like some code examples of time complexities where if we have like just one for loop here we know that it is linear um, time complexity and if we have like these two for loops here like a for loop inside of a for loop then we have the quadratic time complexity because we, because we first have to run the, the first um, for loop inside here um, through and then we have to do it um, number of times like the, the number of times that we're running the outer for loop through as well. We can also like here down here we have this um, lock lock uh, n time complexity because in this case here we're going to have this uh, while loop here where we take the middle element here then we just keep dividing our problem here so we're just halving halving the problem so this will be lock n time complexity and the quicksort algorithm here that we talked about in in the previous videos as well it's n lock n time complexity so this is like one of the best sorting algorithms there are on on larger like uh, containers or arrays because here we have this uh, pivot point here, so we have we we're halving the problem each time, but we still have like um, we still have to go through it like n times. So we'll go through this uh, linear times, and then we're halving the problem every time. So this time complexity for quicksort will be n log n. So we can also like have uh, like a scheme here or OU or like the time time complexity for some different kind of data structures um, where you like. If you want to, you can just like look these things up here and like try to see like what type of uh, data structure you want to use for some specific um, applications, or if you want to do some uh, do some um, 
operations on the data structure. So like, let's, let's say down here that we want to do, for example, insertion um, or like deletion of elements on our data structure, then it will be better to use, for example, like binary search tree or some other like data structures compared to, to for example, like an, an ordinary array because an ordinary array, the insertion will be um, O of N. So we will be linear where down here will be log of N. But if we have like, for example, a stack or queue and that could be used for our application, we will get the, like, the best case here because we get a constant, um, we get t constant time complexity. So like these green, um, like these green areas here, like they are the best uh, cases for like um, our data structures. So you can look up this uh, scheme here or this like table here if you're going to like, um, if you're going to find out like which type of data structure you're going to use to get the most uh, or like the best time complexity for, for your application or program. So we also have these time complexities for the sorting algorithms where uh, we can see down here that we have the best uh, sorting algorithms with bucket sort, radix sort and counting sort. But like these, um, these um, sorting algorithms are like for specific examples or like for special cases. So like some different kind of cases or like situations need to be, um, need to be there to be able to like use these sorting algorithms down here. But then else we can just see that some of the other good, uh, good algorithms is like the, the quick sort algorithm here, which is n log n um, compared to like, for example, bubble sort, insertion sort, and, and some other like sorting algorithms like that, that has quadratic time complexity. And as we saw on some of the previous slides that when we have time complex, like quadratic time complexities, it just like, it's a really steep curve. And if our number of elements in our array is big, then it will like grow really fast um, the number of operations that we have to do. So like, Quicksort here is like probably like the best, one of the best sorting algorithms for like larger arrays. And also the the, the worst case space complexity is lock of n. Um, so it's, it's also like kind of good um, where merge sort and, and tim sort has linear uh, space complexity. So we're gonna jump into some line text here and I'm going to show you some different kind of examples of like how we can do tests on the algorithms that we implement in code. So from one of the, one of the last uh, previous videos, we implemented this quicksort algorithm and the bubble sort algorithm. Uh, where quicksort is n log n time complexity and bubble sort is quadratic. So we're going to compare these two algorithms here where by counting the number of operations they take. And then we're going to change the input size of the, the array that, that needs to be sorted. And then we're going to compare those uh, outputs and the, the time complexity of those algorithms. So the first here is the quicksort uh, that we're going to take, which is uh, n log n time complexity. So we just have some um, counting or like variable here that we can count up uh, to count up the number of operations that we do when we're using this quick sort algorithm. And then we have this partition, a partition function here to just partitions like the, the array every time we call, a call the function down here. Um, so we have this quick sort here, which is that we select a pair point and then we just divide our array um, into smaller halves until, until like we have um, sorted our array. So up here, when we're partitioning here, we just like having these recursive calls here of the quick sort algorithm. And then we're calling using this partition function here. So this partition function here does two swaps in this, um, in this example here. So we have a swap inside of our for loop here and we have a swap down here. So we're just counting the number of like swaps on, or like operations we're doing on the input array that, that this function here takes. So every time we do a swap here, um, we, call, we just increment our time complexity variable here. Uh, by one and we also do it down here if we, if we call this swap function here. So then we can like count the number of aberrations we have done on our vector um, regarding of like the number of inputs we have in this vector here. And we also have this bubble sort here where we, we're just doing this swap here inside of these two nested for loops. So this will be quadratic time because we know that um, because we have two nested for loops here and then we're just calculating again like or counting how many times we're calling this swap function here and swapping elements and doing operations on our, on our array here. So to like kind of test these two implementations of the algorithms here, um, we first have like a test numbers vector here that is just empty. And then we just fill in our, our vector here with numbers. And in this case here, we're just taking 10,000 numbers. Like we can start with, let's say hundred numbers, and then it will just push back all those numbers here to test, test number vector. So we're going to use this vector here as test, and then we can increase this number after we've done a, a couple of tests. Then we have like some random device here. We're going to use these functions just to shuffle our, 
our array, uh, like our array because here we'll just like input like one to hundred um, in our test number so it will all already be sorted but then we just shuffle the numbers here in the array like randomly so we can then sort the array afterwards just for demonstration and test purposes then we have the number of input elements which is just the size of, of the uh, of the test vector here and then we have we're just going to like output like the numbers here like the from from the original array before we're doing the sorting and then we have these two functions here that we're going to call um, on uh, like on our array that we need to to sort and then we have the sorted array down here and we just output the sorted array again and then in the end we just um, output the number of aberrations that we have counted up with our time complexity counter um, from from the two algorithms that we have implemented so let's start with testing the let's start with testing the bubble sort algorithm which is quadratic time complexity so if it control b here we can see that the number of input elements is 100 and the number of aberrations is 2306 so if we're like, for example, we can go down here and we can just uh, start with testing the quicksort here and see like how many operations the quicksort algorithm does to sort this array. So here we have 2,306 and if I hit control B here again, we can see that we only have 418 operations now uh, when we're using quicksort instead of bubble sort. And this is like a lot of more, a lot less operations compared to the bubble sort because the bubble sort has quadratic time complexity where quicksort is only n log n time complexity. So the bigger our array gets like the better um, our quick sort algorithm um, performs compared to the bubble sort, for example. So if you go up here and increase the numbers here, so this is like only 100 elements in our array and our quick sort algorithm already like performs a lot better than our bubble sort because the bubble sort just gets really because the, steep, the curve is so steep. So the more elements we, we have in our vector, like the steeper or like the more aberrations um, it takes because it is uh, quadratic as I said. So if for example just take like 10,000 here now uh, as an example and we go down here and run the quick sort again, we can see that it performs like 88,000 operations on uh, 10,000 uh, input elements. So this is like a lot of operations but it's still like a lot less than compared to like for example bubble sort. So we have 88,000 here and if we do the same here with the bubble sort, like if we can just see here that it just takes a lot longer time. It takes like 1.3 seconds here to run the algorithm. And if I go back here, it only takes like 0.7%. So it's almost like uh, twice as fast, uh, the quick sort algorithm to compared to the bubble sort. And this is only by using the, by doing this algorithm in this code here. So if we had some other algorithms that we were running like uh, together with this algorithm, like it will just take up more time. So if we see this bubble sort here, we can see that we have 88,000. So we have like five digits here. And if we use the bubble sort here, we can see that we now have, um, we actually have like eight dig digits here. So it's like a lot of more operations when, when we're talking about like 10,000 input elements. And in practical examples, like we could have input elements like of several 10, 000, tens of thousands. So like this is just to show you like how much time complexity is actually like um, affects our program and both in like time wise and also like space wise. So if you take the last example here with um, with one million elements here as in, in, as an input. If we run this bubble sort algorithm on um, on this number of input elements, it will just crash the program. So we, we couldn't do this with with our bubble sort algorithm. So if you try to like do it with the quick sort algorithm here, we can see that it it also like it takes one point one seconds, but it can still run the algorithm and it's, it's still not like at that many operations compared to, to the bubble sort algorithm, which will just like crash this program because it took up so many uh, operations. So this is like how you can test your algorithm that you have implemented in code by just having some counter um, that counts out the number of operations you do. And then you can like do several tests here and, and like try to like take some input elements and see like how, how it like ar arises, if it's proportional like or linear or and we have this uh, quadratic time complexity where the number of operations is quadratic compared to like the number of input elements. So this is like how you can test it in code and like also like how you can see how good your program or algorithm performs. So that's it for this video guys. Remember to hit the subscribe button and bell notification under the video. And also like the video if you like the content and you want more of it in the future. I'm currently also doing this computer vision tutorial in C++ um, with OpenCV and an artificial intelligence tutorial where we're currently talking about reinforcement learning. So if you're interested in one of those, I'll link to one of them up here or else I'll just see you in the next video guys. Bye for now.